You are listening to audio from the Decidedly Podcast. This episode is a highlight clip from this week's full episode. To listen in on the complete conversation, see the show notes for the link to the complete show. You can help us out by leaving us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. We appreciate every bit of your support. I'm Morgan McKittrick, your producer, and this is Decidedly. All right, my first question for you is from Street Broad Street Fighting, signing lease or building my own building soon. I started teaching Muay Thai and MMA in January 2020, subletting from a jiu-jitsu gym. We somehow survived COVID, and the program is now thriving with new students coming in, word of mouth, uh, and organic traffic from our website. I have an opportunity to partner with another jiu-jitsu guy to open our own location in a different neighborhood in the city. He's coming in with enough money to secure the lease and pay the rent for a few months. In a way, this is a huge progress, but I'm still a bit hesitant to move forward. The rent is manageable. I'd be stuck paying it out of pocket for up to a year while we build a new business. Well, well okay. So okay. You're, you're paying rent out of pocket. That's how rent's paid, typically. <laughs> like, keep going. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know another way than out of pocket. So while there's risk, there's also room to make some serious money. What do I do? Risk it and move forward or play it safe and continue to grow slowly yet gradually. So uh, first things first, I'm all for the risk, right? If you are thinking about risk and say, well, is it going to be worth it or should I play it safe? Go for it. Life is short. You don't know how many days you got left. You want the freedom. You want to grow. You want the huge upside potential. Take a shot, man. Take a shot or, you know, keep being, keep being in the back dusty corner of this other gym on the wrong side of town where you don't really want to be. If you thought that, if you think there's potential, which you do, because you're considering it, take the risk. Life is about making the most out of the risk that you take. Second, it's going to be harder than you think. So I'm telling you to do it. And I'm also telling you it's going to be harder than you think, especially if you're moving across town. You might as well expect none of those students to come with you. No, no nobody's traveling down to follow you. No. Now, I, I might do that. if my if, I would do that. If my jiu-jitsu gym moved across town, I would stick with them. But I'm loyal. I built a community. That's my coach. You know, if he goes somewhere that is conceivable, you know, he didn't move out of the state, I'm, I'm sticking with him. But I've also been training there for seven years or something like that. So... If you just started a few years ago, I don't wouldn't expect that type of loyalty out of your students. At the same time, you're capped where you are, and you're kind of, kind of given that vibe. Hey, I've got a cap on the growth here. You're not capped when you're running your own business. You can make decisions on when to expand, when to hire new coaches to come in, uh, when to increase the offerings on the class schedule. I say absolutely go for it. Yeah, I, I think if they're the type of coach that is a superstar coach like you have, uh, they're not asking this question, risk it or play it safe. They're like, you know, hey, my, my guys are coming with me wherever I go. I think one of the things I would do is that you're going to tend to be one or the other. You're going to be a risk it type person like you, or you're going to lean into the play it safe type person. And I would begin to just get the the other perspective from somebody who tends to look at another way, just so you are seeing the risks that if you're not aware of them, uh, if you're tempted to risk it, look at what, you know, what options are out there. So, so I, I would just look, talk to somebody who would take an opposite approach just so you can get a full range of, of the perspective. You would talk to somebody who's going to talk you out of it. I, I don't want them to talk me out of it, but I want them to see a different perspective. So if I'm a type of play it safe type person, I might come talk to somebody like you that might be encouraging. If I'm just a risk it person, I might talk to a play it safe type person who can help me discover what risks I might be otherwise missing. I think on a decision this big, which is life changing and lifestyle changing, if you are inclined, if you're, you've got an inkling, hey, I think I think I can make this work. You don't need any noise from the people that haven't been down that road. So if you're going to go ask for outside perspective, the outside perspective that you're getting needs to absolutely be with people who have been in the shoes of running their own business before and starting their own business. If you go talk to grandma, well, oh, I didn't can say that. I'm, 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 but I want to be clear when when you talk about that when you're using the opposite approach, I really think the only 
The only way that opposite approach works, which can be very valuable, is if the person can relate. They don't have to have been in the exact same shoes like they have to have started a jujitsu gym. And, you know, they don't have to be the same industry, the same business, the same road you went right. down. But they do have to be able to relate. And if they can't relate at all, their perspective might not be what you need. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So the next the next question is by Alien Engineer. And it's starting a business with a bunch of people, how not to get screwed over. My entire team was laid off at our company and the company was dropping our clients. So we are going from our own LLC to our own company, doing the thing we did before. In my last company, my old business partner completely screwed me over when I exited the company. I was a guarantee on some accounts. And even though I was supposed to have been removed from the accounts, they never did. Six All years right, later. That's tough. Well, it sucks. For that's about the worst thing that could happen to you in a business partnership. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. They closed the business and declared bankruptcy. I was left holding the bag for a ton of money. Uh, new people in this new venture, I've worked with them for a long time. They're great at their jobs, but there's zero business acumen. This makes me worry. Right now, I'd love to build another company, but I'm concerned about being business partners with them and then fighting them to do the right things. What would make sense as a low percentage of the company I could have uh, maybe an advisor where I can participate and lend my skills? but not be on the hook again if the business nose dives. So this is a, uh, I'm glad we have this question immediately after the last question. I'm very much getting the vibe from this guy that he's not up for the risk. The other guy was like, hey, I'm up for the risk, but like, am I an idiot for taking it? This one is, well, you know, they're kind of talking me into it, but I don't want to. That's the vibe I'm getting is he doesn't really want to take the risk. And I'm not judging you. If I had gone through that type of experience, I might be a little bit averse as well. He's a little gun shy. But if you are timid, then it's not for you, right? If you are shopping at the bit, then sitting on the sideline is not for you. Meaning if you have that gut instinct that I got to go get it, I got to take this opportunity, you're going to hate yourself for the rest of life if you don't do it. If you are tiptoeing your way into entrepreneurship, Ooh, that's not going to work either. You got to be all in, all out. And this guy sounds like he's wanting to straddle the fence. So I would say get off the fence and be out. Second, if these people are not people that make you 100% confident that you can trust them as your business partner, then don't do it. And I don't know, based on the question, if you have concerns about them specifically, you know, would you hire them to work for you? Would you work for them? If so, then they're probably pretty solid people. There's a higher standard if they're going to be your business partner for sure. But if, if these are, if there's something about the people, then run away, right? If they've given you any reason to believe that they lack integrity, run away from it entirely. If you're just concerned about the concept of business owners in general, um, then I think there's some very, there are some ways to, uh, to structure the organization uh, that protects that and to structure the job responsibilities that protects that. Um, and if they're not up for that, if there's any shady dealings going on, then uh, then that gives you an opportunity to run as well. Yeah, I, I think you'd want to have a meeting in the minds of these people and make sure that you're all on the same page with the purpose and why you're doing this business, what the values are, what you're wanting to do in terms of the vision for that business. Make sure you're all pulled in the same direction or rowing in the same direction. Thanks for making the great decision to listen in to this week's episode highlight. If you want more of what you just heard, see the show notes for the full episode. As always, for the latest decision-making tips, find us on decidedlypodcast.com or on Instagram at decidedlypodcast. And be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter from the link in the show notes. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review as well. We read all of your comments, so if you learned some decision-making tips today, let us know. Until next time, this is Decidedly. Insights, advice, and comments provided by Sean Smith, Singer Smith, and speakers identified as part of the Decidedly podcast should not be considered recommendations. Speakers not identified as members of Decidedly are expressing their opinion, and their statements should not be construed as reflecting the views of the Decidedly team. This podcast is produced solely for informational purposes, not personalized advice.